Hello, my name is Patrick Andrews, your stenograph representative here in Florida and Georgia. Today I'm bringing you four useful tips to help you get more out of your Case Catalyst software. Many of you use some of these features, but I'm hoping that at least one of the four will have a specific application in your everyday editing and open your eyes to new possibilities. Case Catalyst is truly awesome software, and I encourage you to investigate all of the menus as features are added in each new version that comes out. Today, I'll be talking about the following four features. Themes, how to change your function bars, quick fix suffix, and auto hide panes. Sometimes it's nice to change the look of things around you when you get bored or tired. Just as you can change furniture or placement of items on a table or your desk, you can change the way Case Catalyst looks. There are many looks or themes available to you so that you can view Case Catalyst in your favorite color. To access the various themes, click on Tools, then highlight Options, and move the cursor over to Themes and click. Then select a theme and click on Preview to see how your screen will look. For example, I'll go to Tools, I'll go down to Options and highlight it, move over to Themes and click. And you'll notice there's quite a variety of colors here, and you'll notice also that I have selected on my screen Green Sage Large. The difference between that and just Green Sage is that uh, some of the icons are smaller, and also the font uh, under your file names is smaller as well. So, for instance, say you like lavender, this uh, click on Lavender Large and click Preview. Now, if you want to keep this color, click OK to apply or cancel to leave everything as it was, which I'm going to do now. A number of my customers have asked how to change the function bar. <clears throat> Different toolbars are displayed in the different functions. For example, Manage Jobs has a different toolbar than Edit. You'll notice in my Manage Jobs screen, I have things dealing with fi uh, opening and saving files, and also moving between different directories, and also I can access my dictionary from here. Now, if you don't have the dictionary information here, um, you can always add it, and I'm going to show you that how to do that in a minute. But now I'm going to move on to a, an edit file so that I can show you how to change the toolbar in edit. Now, if you're like me, many of these items you don't ever want to use. Um, you just do it either with a uh, with your mouse or with a keyboard command. To change any toolbar, you're going to click on the down arrow at the end of any toolbar to display options. So for instance, here is a little down arrow. And then I'm going to hover the cursor on Add or Remove Buttons. Now, uh, at this point, you'll see several different groups. Standard, Standard Plus, Edit, Open Special, and Customize. The standard functions are over in this group ending with that down arrow and then you have the standard plus group and then you have the edit group and then you have the open special group um, so what i would like to do is just show you an example of how, why or how you would change these buttons under the standard menu I really don't use any of these items so I could uncheck them all but for now uh, take a look over at the very far left of the screen where my arrow is pointing and I'm going to remove new open and save as I don't use these if I wanted to save a file I would use control s in my transcript however I don't want to permanently delete these myself so I'm going to add them back and you'll notice that they just fit right back onto the toolbar here on the edit screen 
there's quite a few things that, and some of which may not be on your <clears throat> open on your toolbar. For instance, I find having the center justify and left justify turned on, and they're located right here uh, in here. So if I wanted to uh, center a file, I would just click on the line I want centered and click center, much like you would in Microsoft Word. So uh, buttons that are active on the toolbar, you'll see a check mark next to the items. To remove an item, you just uncheck the box. To add an item to the toolbar, check the, item, the box next to the item. You may also customize the toolbar by adding other functions and features. You would do this under Customize. Now, Customize allows you to add most of the features of Case Catalyst if you wanted them in this menu. Uh, one interesting thing I wanted to stop on, though, is the um, options in this group. Some people like to see large icons. Look what happens up here to all the icons if I click that box. You'll notice that they're all big. Um, I find that that just takes up too much space, so I don't have it turned on. Um, <clears throat> the show text under the function bar, I really do like. See, notice under this icon, and I have edit. If I took that away, you're going to see that there's no text. I just find that very useful, so I turn it back on. And then show screen tips on toolbars. What that means is, uh, when you land on a on a function, on an icon, a little box shows you what that icon actually stands for. This is a great way to customize the toolbar and get rid of items you normally access using the keyboard. If you decide you want any items back on the toolbar, access the toolbar functions and check the items that you want back. The next thing I'm going to show, talk about is quick fix suffix. Uh, many of you probably already use this, but in case you don't, um, sometimes you may write a word with the wrong suffix, or you fail to add the suffix to the root word when you're writing fast. It's very easy to change the suffix or add one to the end of a word, and the spelling of the word will automatically be correct. One way to change or add a suffix is to click on the word that you want to change, click on the special edit menu, rest the cursor on fix words, and then click quick fix suffix. And then in the box that opens, you can double click the desired suffix to change the word, or you can type the letter next to the desired suffix. But there's a quicker way to do this, and that's to simply press Control shift d and that will go ahead and open the box, and then you can type the letter next to the suffix. In this case, I'm going to just change season to seasonable, and you'll notice over here that b is the letter I would type, and it will automatically add the suffix. If there's a particular suffix you change frequently, you can create a macro for that specific suffix and assign it to the key of your choice on your keyboard map. At this point, since it doesn't make sense in the, C, in the uh, sentence, I'm going to go ahead and Control Z to remove that suffix. And uh, next, <clears throat> I want to talk about auto hide panes. You can access the panes in four ways. Using your keyboard, you could type Alt-V to access the View menu, E for panes, and then type the underlined letter for the desired pane. Or you could access it using your mouse, click on the View menu item, and rest the cursor on panes to view the available panes. You, on the toolbar, if you have the Open Special group open, click on Panes to view the available panes. This is something new in the later versions of Catalyst. And you'll notice up here where my dictionary information is, there's a little item called Panes. You can click on the little arrow next to it, and there are the panes. This is really much easier than going through the Special Edit and then Fix Words, or I'm sorry, and then uh, 
pains. So um, the easiest, though, is to uh, rest the cursor on a hidden pane to access the contents. So my favorite is the fourth option. To use this feature, first open a pane using any of the methods uh, that I just mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and open this cat scratch pane just to show you how this works. Once the pane is open, locate the vertical thumbtack, which signifies that the pane is open and fixed on the screen. And you'll see the little con uh, thumbtack here. To auto-hide the pane so that it's easily accessible from the side or the bottom of the screen, click on the thumbtack so that it's horizontal. And once you move the cursor away from the pane, the pane will auto-hide on the screen. And then you can easily access it by resting the cursor on the tab. At any time, if you want to fix the pane on the screen, click on the thumbtack so that it is vertical again. So I'm going to move my cursor over to Cat Scratch, and you'll notice that the pane slides open. Now, if I wanted to just look for something in here, that's fine. And once I move my cursor away, it will hide again. However, if I want it to be fixed on the screen, I'll just click on the thumbtack and fix it on the screen. You can then place, uh, use the compass rose to place or undock the pane where you want it to reside on your screen. In case you don't know what the compass rose is, it is the way you can fix or dock panes where you want them on the screen. To move a pane, left click on the title bar and hold it while you move the pane. Note that various locations become highlighted on your screen. So I'm going to left click on Cat Scratch and I'm going to move it. And now you're going to notice these little symbols all over the screen. And those are uh, places where you can drag the, the pane and it will put it where you drag it to. So move the pane to one of these locations and release. So I'm going to move it to this top one and release. And now you'll notice that Cat Scratch is located at the top of my screen. And it will now be docked in the location that you selected. If I wanted to hide it, I would hit the thumbtack. And then you'll notice that it's affixed at the top. But I don't like that location, so I'm going to move it back. I'm going to grab this, the uh, title bar, left click on it, and drag it over to the uh, left side of the screen and release. And notice that it's fixed. Um, if I move this away, it's just a floating, a floating thing. And that's not really a good thing while you're editing. Um, and you may have experienced an undocked pane before. That's because somehow you had grabbed the title bar and moved it, and then now it's just sort of floating. To remedy this situation, you're going to left click on the title bar and move the pane to the spot on the compass rose that you want, and then release. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and auto hide that pane. And you'll notice that I have over here on this side speaker list, easy text. Hot spots, vertical notes. Down here I have reveal codes. So you can have a lot of the features that you use all the time just docked and auto hidden on the screen. In addition to exploring menus in the software, be sure to check out the help menu for Case Catalyst Help. I'm going to click on Help here and the Support Help Desk. And by the way, F1 is Help. Anywhere in the software, if you need to ask a question or find out some information, just press F1 and you'll have the entire uh, help menu av available to you. Also in here is the Catalyst Manual, Command Summary Cards, the README file that actually talks about the items that were added in the latest version, the integrated video training for uh, that has lots of videos on how to do things in the software, and also self-study guides and other items that add functionality to your software. Thank you for taking your time out of your day to learn more about your Case Catalyst software. If you'd like more information, please contact me at 630-532-5350 or contact me at pandrews 
at stenograph.com. Thank you. Goodbye.